Hey guys, it's Noel and this is Weezy Reviews and this video is about headphone measurements and also the Mini DSP Ears measurement system which is what I use um, for the graphs in my videos. Uh, let's talk about what headphone measurements are, whether you can trust Mini DSP Ears measurements and are they accurate and can you trust any measurement of a headphone and um, well, let's just get into it. Now, before we start this, let me just give this little disclaimer that I'm an enthusiast, I'm not an engineer, and as such, this is going to be a basic level or an enthusiast level overview about um, about headphone frequency measurements, and I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who know a lot more about this than I do, and equally, I'm sure there's quite a lot of people out there who know less than I do, but I'm not going to try and talk up to the experts on this, I'm just going to try and break this down to enthusiast level. If you are an expert on this, please please remember that everyone starts somewhere and do feel free to elaborate on any particular discussion point in the comments if you feel that um, if you feel that you've got anything to add. No, please please do. But obviously this is this is going to be at a little bit more of a basic level than the expert level. This is going to be aimed at more of the the enthusiast audio file, the beginner audio file. So let's just start out with the human hearing range, which is generally considered to be 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Now, of course, there's a few outliers um, whose hearing may exceed that when they're really young. However, for the most part, 20, 20 kilohertz is the maximum that humans can hear. Now, this does decrease with age to varying degrees, depending on the individual's um, individual makeup, how, whether they've been exposed to hearing damage levels of uh, sustained noise or they've got any health concerns. For my part, uh, I can't hear much above 14 kilohertz, which is maybe, this is probably about right for my age, maybe a little bit lower than it should be for my age, but that's from many years of my youth in rock clubs. So most headphones are designed to replicate sounds within the range of human hearing. However, how they actually perform between that 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz can, can vary wildly. It's not enough to say that a headphone can re reproduce sounds between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. That doesn't tell us anything about how that headphone will reproduce any particular individual frequency. It doesn't really tell us how it performs between those two numbers. So to break this down simply, some headphones are able to reproduce lower frequencies better than high frequencies, and we would probably call that a bassy headphone. Some headphones are able to reproduce higher frequencies better than the lower frequencies. We would probably call that a bright headphone. Some headphones can produce a really good bass response, really good treble, but it's not so good in, in the mid-range. And we would call that a V-shaped headphone. And, and similarly, some headphones are equally able to produce frequencies across the whole spectrum. And we would generally call that a neutral headphone. So why is this important? Surely it's your ears that are the ultimate arbiter of how good something sounds. Who cares how something measures if it sounds bad? The more creative types here will attest to the fact that when it comes to making music, you can just throw away the rule book. It doesn't matter how a particular creative tool is designed to be used. It's how the end result sounds that is the most important thing. And on a personal level, all judgment about headphones is entirely subjective. There's no right or wrong headphone. There's just do you like it or not. And yes, that also includes headphones like the M50X. However, when it comes to explaining how something sounds to another person or comparing headphones against each other, subjectivity must take a back seat. If I say headphone X is bassy, what does that mean? Does that mean that this headphone is bassy or does that mean that I think that it's bassy? One person's light bass is another person's heavy bass. So how do we resolve that? Typically, this objectivity can be obtained by using a control or a reference point, such as a well-known and popular headphone on which to compare everything, which is why I use the HD6XX or HD650 in all of my reviews as a point of reference. If I say headphone X is bassy compared to the HD650, that is a lot more objective and has a lot more meaning than a simple statement, headphone X is bassy. Now, a more scientific approach is to look at the numbers and define an objective description of the headphone. And that's why we measure a headphone's frequency response. And once we have a graph, we can easily see how the headphone performs and compare them between each other. So how do we do that? 
Well, we can test our headphone performs by playing a frequency at a set volume and measure the sound pressure level of that frequency as reproduced by the headphone. Every frequency will measure a different sound pressure level depending on how the headphone is able to reproduce that frequency. We can do this measurement for every frequency between 20 Hz and 20 kHz and then plot the results on a graph. And that is, in essence, how we measure a headphone's frequency response. Of course, we don't actually run a test for every single frequency between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. It's generally done by using a sine wave sweep from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And then the measurement rig will actually record the results for every frequency on the way up through that range. So for that task, we need some kind of measurement rig. So full-scale professional rigs built to a specific standard, such as the ones from Grass, are industry-recognized and the, the proper way to do it. However, for as long as there have been audio files and computers, there have been homebrew methods for getting headphone measurements. Now, a rather old-school way of doing this is by mounting a calibrated measurement microphone into a flat plate, so just sticking it in a box, and then mounting the headphones over the top, and then taking the measurements that way. Measurements can vary wildly in this method, especially from one flat plate to the next, and they're not really comparable against professional rigs, although some can be reasonably close. Now, they are pretty useful for rough measurements and can be pr pretty useful for making comparative measurements from one headphone to the next, all measured on the same rig. However, the flat plate has many flaws. There's no standardization, and also measurements on a flat plate are not reflective of how the headphone would be heard on the human head. The presence of your ear in a headphone affects the frequency response versus measuring that headphone on a flat plate with no pinner. If you look at measurements done on one person's flat plate, do you know how it was designed, how it was built and operated? No. However, building a flat plate is a relatively um, cost-effective solution compared to spending tens of thousands of dollars on some professional industry standard rig. And for that reason, there are a lot of flat plate measurements out there for all kinds of different headphones because the DIY flat plate has allowed the masses to, to perform their own measurements. So in steps mini DSP. So a few years back, Mini DSP re released a small cost-effective headphone measurement rig for enthusiasts called the EARS, or Headphone and Earphone Audio Response System. So this system could probably be seen as the natural evolution of the DIY flat plate for the homebrew headphone measurements. Now featuring a USB sound card and a pair of calibrated microphones mounted in an artificial ear canal inside a rough approximation of the human ear made of silicon, it's, it's probably never been as easy as now to create your own measurements at home. So do the Mini DSP ears spell death to professional equipment? Well, of course not, but you never really expected that for $200, right? It certainly could be argued that the Mini DSP ears should be the death knell for DIY flat plates. However, that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So is the Mini DSP ears accurate? Well, no, not by professional standards. The ears are able to provide an approximation of a headphone's frequency response to a level of accuracy not seen in the home before, but it's not a patch on professional standardized gear. There's quite a few little quirks with the ears, such as some often odd results seen somewhere between 4 and 5 kilohertz, and often higher up in the frequency range, things do get a little bit unpredictable. You'll often see peaks or dips a few dB higher or lower than they should be, or peaks or dips that are slightly out of place, such as appearing at 8 kilohertz instead of 9 kilohertz, for example. There's also the concern that the artificial pinna on the ears is not anatomically correct. It is an approximation of the human ear, albeit far less supple, which can lead to some rather odd measurements at times, particularly when dealing with headphones with rather small and shallow ear pads or on-ear headphones. But for open-ear headphones, they're actually pretty good. So if it's not accurate, then what's the point? Because it's one of the many tools available to help us understand and describe how a headphone performs. If a headphone measured on a professional rig shows an elevation in the treble somewhere between 7 kilohertz and 9 kilohertz with a peak at 8.5 kilohertz, and then it's measured on a mini DSP ears and it shows an elevation between 7 kilohertz and 9 kilohertz, but the peak is at 7.5 kilohertz, does that really matter to the average person in terms of describing the sound? Now, if I'm trying to describe a headphone and say, I think I can hear a peak somewhere around 8 kilohertz, and then I measure them on the mini DSP ears and the graph shows a peak between 7 and 9 kilohertz, 
then it's done its job at confirming that what is being heard is objective and not subjective. The fact that the peak isn't in the exact right place is secondary. The mini DSP ears are able to produce some excellent useful graphs that are especially useful for comparing measurements all made on the same rig. Measurements on the mini DSP ears are never going to be so wrong or so far out as to be completely useless, regardless of what some people say about them. But measurements done on the mini DSP ears or a flat plate are not meant to be taken literally and as accurate. They're simply just one of the many tools that we have available to us to help us be objective when dealing with the subjective. So the mini DSP ears is a useful tool, and that's all well and good. But in a world that exists professional standard equipment and professionals who publish those measurements online, why does anyone need a home measurement rig? Can I not just use the graphs made up by the professionals? And of course I can. And we all do. I always check out the professionally made measurements from Oratory 1990, from Ratings, from Inner Fidelity, from HeadFi, etc, etc, as well as my own mini DSP ears measurements. I show my own measurements because they're my own. I don't feel it would be right to show other people's graphs. Like I'm not just going to go to Ratings and take their graph and show it in my video. I don't think that would be right. So. I use this as a tool, as a visual aid to help describe how the headphone sounds. I always encourage anyone, if they want to see actual accurate graphs, to go and look for them online. There's plenty of them out there for most headphones. I show my own graphs as a tool to help me describe a headphone as a visual aid. And as I said, mini DSP or flat plate measurements are not to be taken as accurate, but as an approximation and a visual representation. After all, a picture does speak a thousand words. Now, another useful job of the Mini DSP is for home use is for modders. It's a superb tool for measuring changes and effects of modification for those who like to tinker with their headphones. But yes, it's true that ultimately how a headphone sounds is more important than how it measures. However, it's also true that if a headphone measures poorly, it will almost certainly sound poor too. Also, let's not gloss over the fact that even professional level equipment operated by professionals is not infallible. Even professionals are prone to human error. We also don't always know what sort of compensation curve is being used. Our ratings, for example, use their own target curve, which seems to be close to the Harman target, but I'm not too sure on that myself. Some headphones are notoriously difficult to measure due to the size of their ear pads. Some models are prone to wild unit variations in sound signature as a result of sloppy quality control. In fact, that's actually an area where the democratization of headphone measurements can be useful versus a professional rig. Many professional outlets get to measure only one unit of any particular headphone. And unit variants might become more obvious when multiple units have been measured across multiple similar headphone rigs. Now, back when I had some QC issues with the K371, I was able to demonstrate clearly through measurements the huge difference in driver tuning on a faulty unit, something that would have been extremely difficult to describe with words alone. So in summary then, homebrew headphone measurements and rigs such as the Mini DSP ears are useful tools in helping us to understand and describe a headphone's performance and how it compares to others. They allow us to be more objective when discussing something that would otherwise be rather subjective. They're not to be taken as 100% accurate. In fact, no headphone graph, whether it has been made on a DIY flat plate or a $20,000 professional rig, should be taken as infallible. Regardless of where the measurement has come from, it should just be one tool in your arsenal in describing how a headphone performs. But it should never be the only tool. So that's going to be it then. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. And if you did, perhaps give me a thumbs up and consider hitting the red button down there and subscribing and maybe the little bell right next to it. And also consider sharing this video around. I'm going to have a lot more content like this coming up soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.